have just come in to Rhinebeck and she's she's a busy one. Busy. Beautiful colors and already have stopped to see a number of stunning sweaters. The beginning of an amazing day. Welcome or welcome back. This is Pears Wealth Knitting, a knitting podcast all about knitting, yarny adventures, and travel. I'm Jennifer, and today I'm gonna to be sharing two big pieces of my life with you. One is Rhinebeck. I went to my very first Rhinebeck and attended my first weekend at Rhinebeck ever. Um, amazing, and I'm so excited to share. The second part is I'm hosting my very first knit along that information with all of the great details will be found in the second half of the video today. So please stay tuned for that and hopefully you'll join us along. Getting into everything, let's do it all. Um, I'm wearing today the Porsche shawl and if you've been following along, this was in part of my packing for Rhinebeck video. Um, I have actually had a lot more wear in the shawl than I thought it would. This is the Porsche shawl by Natasha Hornby. Um, I found this in the 2020 Lina uh, winter version of their magazine and it was super fun to knit. All the details can be found in a previous video that I've already put together. I will not bore you again with the details, but I have to say it's a lot warmer here than I expected. And um, I'm enjoying it. Let's soak it up before the really chilliness uh, gets to us. Uh, so that's a Porsche shawl. I also wore this to Woolen Folk and um, with a very curated outfit uh, along with the outfits that I did sport on the weekend because that's what I really enjoyed doing was putting everything together and had a lot of fun doing it. Um, so we will get into all of this. Let's start talking about the traveling down to and through the United States. So obviously coming up from Toronto down through, um, we, and this, this is the love of my life with we, um, we first stayed in a small resort outside of Tannersville which is, I still believe, classified as upstate New York. Uh, this is a really beautiful piece of nature and open forest, um, beautiful landscape. We came across waterfalls. It was amazing. We did a nice little hike, a uh, very autonomous hike in Haynes Falls and just had the best time. Um, it was quite touristy, quite popular as we suspected it would be. Uh, this area along with the Hudson Valley is very popular for, I think all folk coming from different parts of the world, but especially uh, New York City folk. Um, so it was highly populated, the trails, um, which was fine, you know, and uh, we were able to enjoy everything that nature had to offer and more. The falls were incredible. Interestingly, there were no barriers up at the falls. So you were able to get as close as you wanted, maybe not encouraged, maybe not supposed to be allowed, um, but there was no physical fence up um, at the fall. So you, you could see all the way down. Now, some of us have a bit of a fear of heights, so we didn't get too close to the edge, but really admired the view and the leaves. The foliage was, I think, at its peak. This year, it seems across the whole board that we're experiencing a lot of like golds, um, some rusts, but not the neon show that we saw last year. In my opinion, last fall was just a delight. It was lots of deep reds, burgundies, bright neon oranges. This year's much more on the gold front, a little more toned down, but still magic. Um, we really enjoyed our time in Tannersville, very small, quiet and quaint, and um, everyone's super friendly, of course. It was amazing. The Friday, we traveled down from Tannersville into Kingston, New York. Uh, this is in the Hudson Valley, not to be confused with Kingston, Ontario. And this is where we stayed for our Rhinebeck weekend. Now, when I say our Rhinebeck weekend, perhaps a little loose, it was really my Rhinebeck weekend. I had the lovely man in my life, um, my partner, 
who um, I spent all of my time outside of Rhinebeck with, of course, whining and dining, which was amazing. Um, but we very much understand each other and really encourage each other's passions and commitments. And so he was very happy to attend with me this weekend um, and to drive me. But I really feel the need to take my time, not feel guilt or rush for taking my time with people and things. And so he happily drove me to all the events, dropped me off, kissed me goodbye, and then picked me up again, which that was fantastic. And that way I was able to do all the things I wanted and more. So that was lovely. Um, so the first stop in um, the Rhinebeck weekend was Wool and Folk. I will say for my outfit, let's talk about that first because that, that's fun for me, I hope for you. Um, I wore the Porsche shawl along with a tight uh, black uh, turtleneck that just allowed the Porsche shawl to really shine. And on the bottom, I wore my red kilt and I did find out this kilt, um, the um, tartan on it is called the maple leaf tartan. One of the viewers uh, messaged in and I just thought it doesn't get any more Canadian than that. It's actually from a school that I know in Toronto called Jarvis Collegiate, which is perhaps why it was kind of in that realm of the vintage and antiques um, uh, kilts that I picked up. Don't really know if it is a true you know, piece of yesteryear per se of Toronto. It might be a newer kilt, I'm not sure, but I do love the tartan and the colors in it. Um, I just wore it with simple black tights and my Doc Martin boots because she was very rainy on Friday, as you have probably heard red seen already. And um, so sadly, the outfit was mostly covered up with a rain jacket but we did have it open to try to expose the beautiful Porsche shawl. Um, here is how the Woolen Folk began for me and the love of my life. Um, and just full disclosure, I will be sharing my positive intake on today. And I know there were a number of different views, right? She was a busy one. Um, so I was dropped off at the cafe. We started out uh, with the hope in mind of grabbing a quick bite for lunch at the Willa Cafe. That was pretty much almost on site of Woolen Folk. Parking was challenging, plus the rain was not helpful towards that. Um, and in addition with parking, you needed US coins for some of the street parking. We didn't have any of that, so we were slightly ill-prepared, um, and we'll put that, you know, on us. So it did take uh, my handsome man quite some time to park, um, which was fine. Sadly, he got heavily rained on. Pushing on, um, going into the Willa Cafe, she was rammed. And I don't know if the workers, the employees, and all the lovely people who were there knew just how busy it would be. Um, I did manage to find a corner of a table and wrestle up two chairs. As we were in there, the food was delicious. I cannot believe that it came as quickly as it did and how delicious it was with I'm sure the people at their pretty much wit's end because by the time we got there, it was very early afternoon. I wanna say like one. And so I think they had gone through this high level of um, customers through the door all, all day, all morning. So I think we were kind of at that tail end for them. Um, the very first knitting human I came across that I recognized was the gorgeous Amy Pelko. I couldn't believe it was her. She was standing in line with Lily from the Curatorial uh, Knits podcast. And I know everyone says this, but it's absolutely true. At least it was for me. I think we, you know, we feel we know these humans because we follow them online. We watch them through podcasts. And yet still when we see them in person, it makes everything 
real and it makes them real. I have to say inside with meeting these first two beautiful knitting humans, I was just screaming with joy, but of course trying to like be chill and, and you know, cool. Um, I was like, oh my goodness, Amy, hi, I'm Jennifer. Oh my God, Lily, hello. And just freaking out inside, but an outside trying to act cool. Don't know if it worked. <laughs> I don't know if that's how it appeared, but I just felt like it was such a beautiful amuse-bouche before everything started. For me, personally, I um, it was just, I feel like, uh, you know, a telltale sign of having a weekend to come that was going to be really special and memorable. Everyone was lovely who I met, and Amy and Lily, of course, in the beginning, they were just, you know, cherry on top to begin the Run Back weekend with. Um, so my love of my life and I had our sandwiches and caffeinated bits. He went on his way back to the parking and I went in to Woman Folk. What I will say is the weather did not hold up for anyone who was attending, which was slightly unfortunate. Um, but one of my old teaching partners says, if there's one thing you can't control, it's the weather. And so I think everyone was trying to do their best. And I will say the highlight for me, of course, was people uh, watching, seeing, meeting people while I was there. The vendor game was not a game I was playing that day. It was very busy. Um, so I think just trying to find and absorb the goodness of meeting the other humans that I wanted to meet, that I was hoping to meet, and I did, quite a few people. Um, I had met uh, Kim and Jonah from Knitting with Kim and Jonah. I had seen up on the stage for the podcast patio, Amy Pelko, she made it up there, which was great, um, along with Jackie Rose. And you'll be hearing about Jackie Rose a little after in the video, which is really exciting. Um, and as I was trying to go through some of the vendors, uh, Squish Yarn, I came across and stumbled upon Jonathan Days from Jonathan Days Podcast. That was cool. Um, and then as I was ready to go, because I didn't spend much time there and I was feeling, you know, that I, I would have benefited from pressing on, um, I came across Gina from Skank Cocaine and her lovely friend, Leslie, uh, from A Friend to Knit With and just, just everything that I thought these ladies would be were and more. Personality plus, warm welcome, just what, for me, what a nice kickoff into this weekend we had. Um, so in general, that was Woolen Folk. Um, I met my loving partner at the library who was trying to get in some work there, stole him away, and we went back to our hotel room in Kingston, New York. Uh, from there, I just have to mention, and I never take video or photos uh, when we're eating out, especially at dinner, again, because I'm such a lover of all things food and wine. Um, I feel like I just totally absorb all of that time by tasting, eating, smelling, and enjoying the company of the other human I'm with. However, I do have to share, um, sadly without, I think, photo or any video, um, we ate at a restaurant called uh, Le Canal d'Enchaine, and this was right in the smack dab of Kingston, a French bistro. And just to preface this, uh, pre-COVID, the love of my life and I would go for Friday night date nights every Friday. We had a French restaurant that we used to go to every Friday. We knew the lovely humans who owned it, who bartended, who served, and it was one of those things that we could walk in and they would, you know, greet us by name. A cocktail would be prepared without even us having to ask. It was magic. It had such a lovely, romantic, cozy vibe. And sadly, after the pandemic, it switched hands. Still around, a little different. Um, so we are still kind of in limbo of another Friday night date spot. Pressing on to Le Carnal d'Anchen in Kingston, New York, this was a gorgeous feel. I wish we lived closer. The food was incredible. The service was hot. Like 
just watching all the servers, you know, hustle in an organizational fashion. It was amazing. Um, drinks were delicious. It had, it just, it, the feel was right. It was romantic. It smelled good. It felt right. It was just a delight. Could have stayed there forever, but knew that we had to get up early to attend Rhinebeck at a very decent hour. So we only stayed for a couple of cocktails and then ended up going back to the hotel, um, but had such a nice time there. Um, pressing on to, into the Rhinebeck Day. Now this is the Sheep and Wolf Festival. This has happened since 1981. Some would say my birth year. Um, so not new hat. The interesting thing with this um, is that it is so organized and so well thought out that it was such a pleasure to attend. Someone who I met on the Friday Woolen Folk had mentioned about a schedule that you could prepare your own personal or personalized um, schedule using the Woolen Folk website. I went to the website that evening after our dinner out and lo and behold, and I'm hoping I can do a little like screen share of what I did, you can go through every every event that Wolf Folk is having throughout the weekend. First, it's color coded. Second, it says where the event will be or demonstration or whatever it is. And you can click on that event. It will be, if you wish, um, you can add it into a personalized schedule for yourself. It gets emailed to you in your inbox and you can then see your own pure personalized curated schedule. I did this. This calls some organizational heart. And I think from running different events in my professional life, um, I just, I just adored it. Um, did I use the schedule? Uh, you know, at, at the, every time going to that exact activity, no. Um, but I liked it kind of as like a rough guide and knowing, you know, if I was going to miss out on something, what it would be, or if I really had to go attend that I could definitely make the point of going. That was awesome. Uh, Ryan Beck morning. Good morning. Welcome or welcome back to Pierce World Knitting. We are heading off to breakfast on the morning of Ryan Beck. Yesterday was woolen folk, beautiful, rainy day. Today we're expecting more rain, but heaps of fun. I'm ready, I have my Ryan Beck outfit, and we're set. Okay. So, uh, I had of course, in my brain intended for all these good things to happen. So we had breakfast at the hotel, which was lovely in Kingston. Um, Love My Life drove me. We went to a coffee shop. I mean, I could talk about the coffee shop for probably half the podcast. I will not. This was a uh, small coffee shop, black bird, black crow, black something, something about a bird um, in a very small like hamlet uh, going out of Kingston to Rhinebeck proper. And, um, was very alternative. Uh, I had asked for just like a regular latte and he's like, okay, so like oatmeal latte. And I was like, or oat milk latte. I said, you know, just like regular dairy. And um, they didn't, they didn't have regular dairy, which is fine, no problem. So we had a little like coconut milk latte auction. Great. Um, ordered a black tea for my love. Asked for some sugar, didn't have sugar, okay. So what did they have? They have maple syrup. Great. Super natural. Felt really healthy. Um, I was a little surprised, I think, kind of by the ambiance. There was a, and even the, uh, the character that ran the coffee shop said like, there, there's a certain vibe in here. And I was, you know, that's cool. You know, everything, everyone goes. And, um, I didn't get a lunch item. My whole idea for going to the coffee shop to get coffee to go to Rhinebeck was also to have a little nibble because I know myself and I know that if I'm getting too involved or you know I'm getting excited about meeting people I really forget to go and seek out food and 
I forgot to get the food at the coffee shop. So note to future self for Jennifer or for you, um, a really great idea would be to get a little food item, a little sandwich, whatever, and bring it to the festival for next year, for a future year. I would love to do that. That was my intent. Getting to Rimac was totally fine. There was a bit of traffic, no big deal. And uh, raining, mind you, not as bad as Friday, but still rainy. Uh, outfit I was sporting, I'll share that quickly. Uh, again, so in love with this outfit. It was the filled sweater by Camilla Fad, um, a newer cast off for me and just is, I don't know, like it's it's a new staple. She's she's been getting worn pretty hard. It's great. Um, in sheer by Hairsfield Designs. Just a cloud of delicious and scrumptious yarn. Um, I wore it with what did I wear? Uh, the blue um, kilt uh, with just a really cool pattern in the pleating um, that becomes lighter and darker through the accordion pleating. Super cool. She lands pretty low, like mid calf on me. So I have to say cozy. Uh, it's an all wool skirt um, and yet still really interesting and fun. Wore it with the docks again because hello, we're back in rain and some black stockings. Had to wear a raincoat, of course. So I wore a black raincoat <laughs> over top of this gorgeous little knit um but you know i want to stay dry and dry and happy you know that's usually how i operate and uh, i did wear a hat again because i wasn't sure kind of whether to expect and being outside most of the time so i wore my tree planter toque which was the free pattern and uh, just rolled it up was it the exact outfit I wanted with, you know, the hat the way I wanted to wear it with my hair? Like, it was fine. It was fine. But I would have rather had my hair up, no hat. I just felt like it would have gone with the shawl better. Okay, so silly. Moving on. Um, so, yes, I get dropped off. Kiss love my life goodbye. We say a time. So, I got dropped off about, I want to say, like, 9 a.m., which is pretty early for me now that I'm not, uh, you know, full-time working, waking up at six and teaching the future by eight o'clock. So it was early for me then. And um, we, I didn't have cell service. And because I'm from out of country, from Canada, I had no internet. So we made a time and we said four o'clock. So I get picked up four o'clock at the gates. Wonderful, perfect, full day, like strap in. Um, I went through the gates, no problem. I had the little ticket on my phone and just baby bobbity did a little scan, went on. I got this little guy here, uh, just a little booklet again. You know, this is lovely for someone who doesn't have access to the internet or perhaps didn't do what I did the evening before, which was to go through and curate my own schedule. Um, again, these guys have been doing this since like 81. So they know, they know what's going on. Um, it has, schedule of all the events listed again color coded it says exactly like location building um the nice thing is that i found and i use this often of course was the map i've never been there before and um just going through solo i went by myself and i'll talk about that in a second um i really really needed to know where i was going i wanted to have a bit of a plan <laughs> didn't really happen of course you know I'm following my toucan Sam wool nose and uh and people I mean that was gorgeous um but also maybe not as strategic as I had imagined in my head just saying um yes I had a mission in the beginning but before I get to the mission in the beginning which I'm gonna touch so I don't forget to talk about said mission um i went i went solo i feel like i may have been one of the very few people at least that i came across that was there totally solo and it's interesting i mean i think if we had met when i was in my 20s and possibly even like to early and mid 30s i didn't do anything alone I was with people all the time. Um, there were periods of time in my life where I had lived on my own and was always out of the house, always meeting up with people in some fit, like capacity, even to the point of coming home from work, for example, to this day. Um, if the love of my life is out at a meeting, you know, sometimes heading out to the cafe 
and just sitting there and doing my thing. I just like hearing and feeling like people are around. Um, but then in contrast now, and I wonder if it's age, I wonder if it was part like due to, you know, lockdowns that we experienced, I've really started embracing time independently, which I thought I would never say in my lifetime, but it's true. Um, I think it's a couple things. I think I really enjoy, I've become very confident, not that I wasn't before, but confident in what I like, what my passions are. And, you know, I know that I want to do the thing. I know I want to go see the thing, touch the thing, feel the thing, and I'm going to go do it. Um, it doesn't mean anymore that I have to take someone with me to be a part of that or perhaps maybe it's even like to the level of experience and joy with someone else because I'm fully happy to share that joy even after the fact with someone who I really love and care about if that makes sense I don't know I feel like um I really allowed myself to enjoy like solo time and independence which is amazing I I, I think and I'm I'm very happy with where I am with it um so I was I was really jazzed to go to Rhinebeck and do it in the way that I wanted, what I felt comfortable with in, you know, giving myself time with people, chatting, seeing the vendors, not feeling rushed, not feeling obligated, not feeling like I had to kind of like abide or or please another human, which perhaps that's an overstatement of, you know relationships and collaboration with any human, friends, family, a loved one. But um, I just like, it's a real like indulgence that I feel like I'm able to do and give myself. And so now I am. So I went to Rhinebeck solo and um, just had the best time. First things first. Okay, just got in, finished some coffee. The very first thing I have to do is pick up the yarn from Green Mount Mountain Spinnery. Um, this is yarn that I purchased while visiting the Green Mountain Spinnery and I had purchased three skeins of their beautiful weekend worsted in pumpkin. Super folly and decided I feel like I need to make a garment instead of an accessory. They were so lovely. They held three skeins back. They, they're bringing it today and I'm picking it up from them at their at their vendor at their table um so i'm gonna go do that first later on i have planned to go see some doggy things so uh frisbee competition with the dogs a herding competition um i want to see sheep shearing there's just too many things to do we're doing it, we're doing it now so i went into the handy little booklet to see on the map where things were and the very first building was my first task of the day. I went to the Green Mountain Spinnery. They had a booth there and I picked up three more skeins of the weekend, <laughs> the weekend wool in, you've guessed it, the color pumpkin. Um, this is the exact shade that I had picked up while I was at the Green Mountain Spinnery in the summer and went on tour at the spinnery, fell in love with this yarn, brought three skeins, took it home, figured I would do some accessory and just fell in love with it a little too much. And so knew that I needed to get more to increase to a sweater quantity. So we have balled up one of these guys. I cheated and I balled at home, forgot my yarn swift at home, hello. Um, but it's okay, we've got three of these guys uh, and I haven't even cast on yet. And the I know the light's changing um, here while I'm here, but it's got really just gorgeous little spots of different colors, cream, a crimson, It's it's pumpkin. Delicious. I'm really excited to knit with this. The backstory is I contacted through email the Green Mountain Spurnery, I think a month before Rhinebeck, and um, first just asked 
if they if they had this it was on the site but sometimes i'm not sure you know is it is it really up to date uh sure enough they had enough skeins i said that i was coming to rhinebeck i was canadian shipping up to canada from where they're located was a cost that i felt like i didn't need to incur because they were going to Rhinebeck. So I boldly asked if they were willing to bring the skeins with them to Sheep and Wool and I'll pick it up. I'll pay for it ahead of time. They said, yes. Like, thank you. Thank you to Green Mountain Spinnery. You're all lovely humans. Um, that's exactly what they did. They had it already in a zippy bag to go already with my payment stub in there. Babydy Bobbity couldn't have been easier. Fantastic, and I know they went out of their way to bring this with them um, to their stall and hold it for me. So thank you very much to them. It made part of my Red Bike weekend, so lovely. And um, jazzed to cast on, but also working through many whips. Uh, so that was the first like thing I really did. Um, I saw heaps of people along the way. I mean, I won't lose everyone because I feel like it's that's a little much um but everyone from like designers um uh hand dyers people with their own beautiful little small businesses um knitters makers like all kinds of crafters farmers um other podcasters it was just it was ridiculous it was it was almost too much to take in at one time um because it, it's like your entire like year plus leading up, or for me, it was like literally like three years leading up to my back of like getting to know like knitting and all these things I just talked about and compressing it into like a day. So even, even to the fact of like walking around my back and seeing people in their hand knits and it's like pointing out like, Hey, that's Caitlin Hunter, blah, blah, blah. Hey, that's the Savory Knitting, blah, blah, blah. It was just and of course I knew, I knew the designers, I knew what they were wearing, I knew the name, it was just, it was overload. It was amazing. Um, I also, for the first time, and this happened at Woolen Folk too, and I have to say surreal in like the best way, in the most heartwarming way, um, I had call outs from people hollering, Pearsall Knitting, Jennifer. I was like, what? <laughs> it was, it was surreal. I, I don't even have words. I, I was surprised um, and I know it sounds silly. I don't know and I'm not a humble person, but I really, I feel so happy and so lucky and special that people not only like watch all the crazy silly things I do. I mean, I knit, I'm a knitter and they're knowing me by name. They've like watched the podcast. These humans are like following on Instagram. Like I follow people, I watch people, I admire and adore and get so much inspiration. And to think that like, maybe the table's will start to start like a smidge and like possibly hello, it's her. Like it's, in, it's insane. Every single human that had called me out of like personal knitting, Jennifer, I was just in love. I couldn't, I mean, obviously there's that connection there where we're liking the same things. Like we're maybe liking the same kind of designs. We're liking the same kind of knitting techniques or yarn, or maybe like you're a rustic lover. Maybe you love the traveling, like you're my human. I um, I just want to thank all those humans because you you made my day, you made my year plus. I, I felt so just warm warm is the way I think to describe it in meeting people and having you share in like this gorgeous little gushing way of like what you're liking like thank you I I can't share how meaningful it is and special it is and I I hope every human feels <laughs> like a smidge of this too because I think as makers you do get called out. Like people will say like, did you knit that? Yeah, I did it, I made it. That's a heartwarming moment. So this was a massive heartwarming moment. So thank you. Okay, I could go on, but like we're breathing. Um, same thing with meeting the other lovelies, just like hearts of gold, hearts of gold. Okay, 
pressing on, pressing on. Um, so not only did I of course see, um, you know, vendors, I'm, I'm squishing and loving the yarn. If you are a, I mean, if you're, if you're into yarn, if you are into knitting, crochet, weaving, um, spinning, I mean, whatever with animal fiber, this is your jam. Like this is your like Olympics of all of those like fiber already goodness. I was overwhelmed. Um, there was heaps of hand dyed, gorgeous, like soft merinos. There was rustic hand dyes. There were rustic natural sheep colors, like clearly my new jam now. It was so much. I was so overwhelmed. I just, I kept going. I kept squishing. I kept smelling the sheepy goodness, like get in there. I, I didn't buy anything. I bought one thing, but I'll share it with you later. And I was just, it's too much. It was too much. It was amazing, but it was too much. Um, and I just realized I forgot to bring an item down with me that I do have to share of one of my purchases. So let's press on. So livestock, there was also livestock. So there was like all kinds of different sheep breeds. I'm not gonna like holler out the names for you because like if you're into sheep, you know it. If you're not into sheep, you're gonna go and you're gonna see it. Great. Um, these sheep were the cutest. They're just like, hello. Some of them had little babies. Some of them had horns. They all had gorgeous little wool. Like it was, it was amazing. And it was like little sheep after little sheep. I could have just like lost my mind because like animal lover, hello. Um, and uh, gosh, I, yeah. Then I heard, I heard a call. I heard a horn. And I'm thinking like, hello, like what, what's going on? So of course, you know, poking, poking my nose around, figuring out what's going on. It's the llama. No, it was the leaping llamas. It was the alpaca parade. I think it was alpaca. Llamas and alpacas, I still don't know what I should after attending the festival, so sorry. Um, it was the alpaca parade. There were alpacas and a goat, I believe, and maybe a couple of sheep. So like, let's say like mixed farmy, farmy creatures, not just the alpaca. They, they go on parade. And there's like a human in the beginning, tooting the horn, strutting, strutting her magic. And alpacas and their like lovely, you know, humans with them, uh, strutting their stuff around Rhinebeck as their little parade. <laughs> I mean, so then there was a filming crew, a small podcast crew of um, Juan, I think it was Juan, um, who was filming, and um, Emily, I think she was, uh, she was helping prompt the verbals um, to film makers of their wares, I'm sure. And, and I did see on Instagram and part of their video that they were filming all kinds of things, including the uh, alpaca parade. And uh, yeah, that was fun. Got to share what I was wearing, of course, thrilled. I'm like, ooh, ask me more questions. I, I want to chat about it. Uh, so that was a little surprise. But the funny thing was, while we were filming on that, um, there was an auction going on through the like plastic tenty divider, not soundproof. I got it ahead of you. I do 15 for you though. 15, not 20. And 20, 15, but I get 20, 15, but I get 20. 15, but I get 20, 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 15. But I do have to say I was worried about the sound because uh, we were in like a small little plastic tenty thing, uh, not soundproof. And just like through the tent was an auction that was going on. And by auction, I mean like the auction caller was hollering in the amazing like auction call, you know, language and the song that they, that they do. And uh, yeah, so I, I had to go there next. So I went and I enjoyed the auction with different like, you know, tools, accessories that they were selling for fibery goodness and barnyard animals. Uh, but I didn't stay there long. Uh, cool, like what, what, a, what a talent. And um, goodness, from there, obviously more vendors were to be had and more lovely humans to be seen. I found myself, uh, I crept to the hill for a second. The hill is located, and again, like, I'm like, where's the hill? 
it's literally on the grounds of Rhinebeck, not on the map, because I think like, you know, kind of the knitting community is just supposed to know where the hill is. It's where there's a fence line, where they have, uh, there's a, uh, what's it called? Uh, sheep herding that happens on the very top of the hill and just kind of, you know, at the, um, the increase, the incline, this is the Rhinebeck Hill. There's a little wooden fence, super cute. Wasn't a mud bowl, which I was surprised about, but I'm guessing the water trickled down in the rain. And um, that's where the people are. That's where, you know, again, you've got the designers, the podcasters, the yarn dyers. It was just like everyone you could want to meet and more. Uh, it was awesome. Fellow knitters, just glorious. I ended up taking off from there because I'm such a dog lover. I went to the Paw Stars dog uh, frisbee show, or I think they called it a demonstration. And I was just, I was there. I was there for the whole show. Um, I love, I love puppers. And this was long and short. I mean, I could talk about this forever too. It was, I believe a husband wife team that take in rescue dogs. And through the play and training of Frisbee uh, with the dog, uh, these little rescue animals that have like, you know, various challenging stories to hear, uh, they learn how to gain trust or regain trust of humans. And it was just, it was so well done. Um, it was, I believe the wife, uh, she was emceeing. And so she would share about that one individual rescue that they had. Uh, well, I believe the husband uh, would get the next doggy ready to go uh, and come out uh, for, for to put on the show. And these dogs are just losing their mind because they all want to go. They all want to play Frisbee. So you hear blah, 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 like the little barks as he was starting to get them ready. It was just the cutest thing. And these little dogs just give it. They just want to try and do their best. And they're having a great time. And these are not like, these are not like agile dogs. We're not talking like border collies and husky. No, this is like mixes of like dash hub mixes and like pit bulls. And <laughs> these are like very, different breeds that you would never expect to see catch a frisbee. It was so well done. It was so good. It was so heartwarming. It was amazing. And it might have been one of the highlights of my time at Rhinebeck, which sounds ridiculous, but I love dogs. And I had Taylor, uh, Taylor Ewan that was kind of like kitty corner in front of me. I knew I could tell with her hair and her sweater. And I was like, again, like, just don't freak out. Just be calm, like cool, you know, everything's all good. She was there with her lovely like man. We chatted after just like, you know, knitting community, the best, the best. Went over to the hill um there chatted with more lovelies you know fellow knitters just really enjoying each other's sweater chatting about the yarn and um yeah i <clears throat> i don't know what to say i uh i was in love i was in love with i think meeting the people because people for me our energy givers and so I just felt so energized meeting these gorgeous humans smiling sharing photos and you know sharing different stories um knowing that they have the same passion I do of knitting and yarn and I have to say for where I am in my circle of gorgeous humans that are my friends and my family my chosen family which I'm so thankful for I don't have per se a very close knitting human. The closest I do, um, she's a best friend, but she's in San Francisco. That's pretty far from Toronto. So this, this was special. I felt so connected. I felt like this is such a wonderful community and so happy and proud to be a part of it. <laughs> am I gushing too much? I don't know, maybe I am, I'm getting hot. I'm getting all that energy again. Um, it was great, it was great. I'm not gonna name all the names here, but like, holy cow, amazing. It was awesome. Okay, I think this is where I'm gonna go with this. So, my intention of going to Rhinebeck was 
to meet the humans. And I did. It was to squish the yarn. And I squished. It was to smell the wool. And I did all the sheepy goodness. Um, that being said, I only really purchased two things um, and got my hands on some other items. So we'll get into that then. Okay, I bought something that's like probably not really, you know, sheep and wooly per se of people that go as a knitter to Rhinebeck. I bought socks. I bought socks that are like heavily not human made. Uh, these are from Phoenix Fiber Mill. They had a gorgeous wall of all of these socks and I couldn't help myself. So I bought some socks. Not that I need socks, but we've already been wearing them. Um, these are a blend of Angora, uh, maybe some Merino. I can't totally remember in a synthetic. The ball band has disappeared. We have been in like three other different locations since, so I don't know. Um, but I'll include the information, of course, from the maker in the show notes. These are cozy. These are fun. These are great. And uh Yep, they're fun. They're a good time. Uh, then I bought the I bought other socks too from the same from the same, you know, sock folk. They were uh, they had also like wool and other like a lot of pre-made things like hats and mitts and things. Um, but these socks were just fun. Uh, these are a merino blend. Uh, there's a synthetic in there to give them the strength. But like it's like a faux little cable and uh, the color burnt orange. Yum, yes. Uh, also interesting, they said they were one size only, so um, adult. <laughs> uh, I have a size six and a half foot. For you, the Euro folk, it's like a 37-ish. These fit me, and I don't, I don't know how they fit bigger feet, uh, but uh, you know, they work for me. So it's the Phoenix Fiber, Fiber Mill. They were a good time. The only other purchase per se I made are these bad boys here. I had no intention of buying yarn. Um, I did. And this was an outdoor, like an outside vendor, uh, not in one of the buildings that I bought from that was on the way uh, to the exit. This is not the exit that I exited. This is another exit that apparently there were two entry points, didn't know. And uh, it's just a rustic good time. They're not, oh, there. Like, there's, there's a halo going on. The sheepiness oh, is real. I mean, Nora, aka Nora Knits, like, get on it. This is, this is a maze. I'm in love with sheepy smells. Yes, I dig it. Apparently not everyone does. And uh, no, this I fell for hard. These are two cones from somewhere I've never heard of. Uh, Comfort Cloth Weaving, Hand Wovens and Weaving Supplies. Um, they were located, like I said, just outside of the um, entrance and exit points. I think they were doing okay, which was nice to see. They had all cones. It was a coney good time. I had such trouble picking cones. I think this is why I purchased it because they're actually on cones and I adore cones. Uh, I'll tell you what this is, I'm getting excited. Must be the uh, the inhaling of all the sheepy goodness. Uh, this is 100% New Zealand wool. I'm gonna go, it's not a merino because she is rough. Like it's supposed to be for weaving and rug hooking, I think. Of course, you know, this this girl here, I'm going to be knitting some kind of garment with it, I'm sure. It'll be it'll be a sweater. And uh yeah, so I got the natural. They were 19 US dollars each. So 20, sorry, 20, 40, 40 US dollars altogether. And yeah, I'm I'm already obviously excited about knitting with it. <laughs> I'll just like just huff huff the cones all day but I think they're I think they're going to be soft enough like if I wear a t-shirt underneath or like a turtleneck because I'm apparently obsessed with turtlenecks in cooler weather they're going to be great they're going to be fine I was already even thinking I mean look at me talking about all this um of putting it together with some scrappy yarn and uh, I have the Lark Baker book the first one 
uh, what's it called? Something knit, first knit, tight knit, the knit, sorry, sorry, Lark, um, with the magic knots. So do magic knots with the scrappy, put it together into like massive bolts and then um, pair it with the Coney goodness. So this could be Coney and then the big ball scrappy yarn to make some gorgeous little sweater or even keep it at this natural. I mean, we're just good. Yeah. Okay. That's some good stuff. That's some good stuff. Um, those were my purchases. Then the little like accoutrement or gifts that I received. So from the lovely um, Kim and Jonah, knitting together with Kim and Jonah. Oh my God, like, this is, I know, it's so silly. It's such the kid in me. I'm like, little goodie bags? Like, yes, please. A little button of these gorgeous gals. Like, wonderful. Um, a little like red mint. Are they telling me something? Probably, because I didn't eat. I forgot to eat all day. What? Um, a little stitch marker. Oh, is it there? Right there? Ooh, ooh, here? I mean, you're cute. I don't even own a dangly stitch marker. Now I have one, right? Like a real knitter. That's, uh, it's pretty exciting. I love it. Like, thank you. Lovely. It's too nice. Um, I met up with Gina from uh, Skin Cocaine. She was giving away a two on the hill. These gorgeous little mini skeins and I'm in love and it's so pretty like it's cute because I've never owned a mini it's my very first mini she doesn't even know that she's like you know take away my mini virginity but like look at how gorgeous we are the colors are not coming up half as much as they should because the lighting but like uh, and I already have a plan for it <laughs> I'm already excited. It's so fun. So good. Um, with her, of course, was a bestie, Leslie, um, from a friend to knit with. She gave me this. I haven't even opened it yet. Look at me keeping it all crisp and pristine. She snuck it in my little, like, handbag that I had. Just like, like, bloop. It was so cute. I'm opening it now for the first time. And, uh... It's, it's sounding, I don't want to be that person be like, this is what it is. Um, but I feel like it's stitch marker. -y. I don't know. Um, cute little card, like very sweet. And goodies in the envelope that I'm opening. I can't wait. I've been waiting for this since Saturday and we're like, what are we like almost end of the week. It is a little stitch marker. Oh, fun. These are my favorite. Okay, I can't even show you. Oh, oh, oh. They're the little, little clippy ones in black, pretty. I think it's black, maybe it's purple. I don't even know. And gold, like brassy colors. Can you see? Ooh, that's good. Oh my gosh, hello, we're matching. <gasps> With my jewelry, you fancy. These are like, these are like big girl stitch markers. Hello, if you remember, you've been following. What am I using? I'm using safety pins. Hello, stepping up my game, Leslie. Thank you. Now, again, real knitter. We're becoming real knitters, big girl knitters. This is great. Oh, I love them. Super cute. Uh, all right, I'm just trying to put it all together. I'm getting excited about all of it. Okay, so fun, so exciting. Now for knit along talk. Okay, now I'm gonna be sharing all about the knit along. This is my very first of all time knit along that I'll be hosting. I am calling it the Holiday Shrug Club Cal. This is a knit along fe featuring a shrug of your liking. It is an inclusive shrug knit along um, that is featuring a variety of patterns as you wish of a shrug designed by the Miss Jackie Rose. There is the Friday Shrug, Saturday Shrug, and Sunday Shrug. These are all free patterns, different gauges that Jackie has so graciously and generously put on Ravelry as a free pattern. If you recall, I have knit the Saturday Shrug, fell completely in love, and I cannot wait <laughs> to cast out more of these gorgeous beasts. Um, she has since just come out with the cinch shrug 
This is a paper pattern that is included with more shaping, more customizable features, and it looks to have such a gorgeous fit. This is a paid for pattern. So the Holiday Shrug Club is a shrug of your liking, your choice, and your yarn that you wish to pair up beautifully with any of these shrugs in one of the free or paid for pattern. And we are going to be starting this cal, this uh, knit along, uh, November 3rd, and we'll run through December 31st. The idea of this cal is so many things. I'm so excited. This idea came to me as I was on a run um, back in Toronto, and I find it sometimes more than sometimes, more often, um, when I'm running, I come up with ideas. It's either a time for me to problem solve things with work or, you know, situations that are happening. Um, but then I also find this can be a time of creativity for me. And so this is when I came up with the Cal idea, the knit along, um, on the run. I thought the shrug is such a gorgeous pattern by Jackie that it's so inclusive of sizing, of you know height of person of uh knit like knit options uh yarn options that it just it, i think it's so inclusive in general um the gauge is really you know really open um so you can knit with finer yarns thicker yarns thicker gauge yarns this can be a scrappy project you can go out and get super fancy stuff if you want it is just it's such an accessory. I think that everyone and anyone can knit. It's a super pleasurable knit um, because again, it's knit and purl. You're knitting and purling and um, does it get any easier than that? Uh, it's something that I have found great joy, not only knitting on it, so the process knit, but the product, the wearing of the shrug is fun. Like. I find, again, maybe it's just because I'm getting into shawls as well, but like, I find it's, it's a fancy wear. It's something that obviously you can like chill on the couch and still look luxurious and feel great in, but it's a super go out piece, the shrug. And I hope that my pictures were able to share just like how stunning I felt in the shrug because I feel like the way that it does like smoosh your little body and like hug your shoulders, but then offer this like gorgeous neckline, it's fun and it feels good on. Uh, with that, with the holidays coming up, I felt like this is such a gorgeous holiday knitwear item. Like bump up your knit fit game. I know, and I'm going to share with what I'm going to cast on in a moment for my shrub to participate in the knit along, um, cause I'm doing this anyway, but I just feel like it's such a nice piece, like to go to dinner with and you look put together, like you feel put together and you can wear it over like a dress, a nice blouse, a camisole. You can even wear it like if you, if you, I guess, had like enough stretch or depending like, you know, what jacket you're wearing, it can even go over a jacket or coat or wool coat and look fabulous. Like, I'm getting really excited, but like amazing. They're quick little mitts. I mean, if you were going for bigger gauge, like, you know, I did the Saturday, chunk or even, you can go Sunday, Sunday shrug. Um, that took me, my Saturday shrug took me a weekend. Like granted, being totally fair, like I, I was knitting quite a bit, but I mean, they can be done in relatively quick periods of time. So if you have like an event coming up or a nice dinner for the holidays, like do your little thing. And then you get to like wear her out to your like, you know, champagne event. Another nice thing, and this is where I was like getting out of control excited. This is a gift knit. This is the best gift knit. I mean, I've only started knitting about three years ago. And my first year, I didn't have the ability nor capacity to knit people gifts. Like, in it just wasn't happening. 
over like last year and the year before, I started knitting my closer loved ones knits. And I have to say, I always rack my brain a bit about what to knit them. And usually I theme. So like, I think last year was the year I did hats. So I did hats for people and I, I like doing a different thing for myself. So I chose a bunch of different hat patterns that I knit for my loved ones. This year, don't tell, but she's gonna be the shrug. <laughs> it's such a great thing. It depends on, I guess, kind of what, like, you know, how much you're gonna do, if you're gonna knit longer or wide or whatever, but she's not a yarn guzzler. Like on my Saturday shrug that I did, that took three balls of the Camaro Sniff Nug. That's, it's not massive. It's not taking up heaps of yarn, like a sweater would. And yet I still feel the gift is not only gorgeous because you've knit it, quick and dirty, like she didn't take tons of time, but it's a substantial gift. Like, you know, it's not little, I don't know, like a little like mini scarf or mini, mini micro shawl that people are gonna be like, oh, thank you so much. And then like put aside and never wear. People are gonna wear the shrug. They're gonna wear it and it's such a beautiful piece to give. I can't even share what a perfect gift knit this is. Um, I'll give you some more information about the cow before I, you know, just like take up five years to go on about the shrug and um, Jackie Rose's design. So thank you. Um, so like I said, the knit along is starting on November 3rd. Part of that reason why is obviously you want to get into your holiday knitting, perhaps for yourself is like a little like selfish gift, uh, gift knit to yourself or for someone else very important in your life. Um, but as well, Jackie has uh, given permission um, to collaborate with this, uh, this net along where we are giving away one free pattern of her newest design, the Cinch Shrug. Uh, this shrug pattern is up for a draw. Uh, the draw will be happening on November 2nd uh, at midnight uh, Eastern, daylight time, I think it is. It's the Toronto time that I'm doing. I'll be drawing then the next morning and sending a DM through Instagram to the winner. Uh, this winner will receive the Cinch Shrug pattern for free. And uh, how you enter to win is going to my Instagram, which is at pairs well with knitting. And all you have to do is follow along uh, like the post, uh, you'll see a post that's pinned with my profile and just comment and say which shrug you'd like to knit up. Maybe it's a couple of them, maybe it's all of them, I don't know, but um, that's how you enter. So what I'm going to do is just take from those comments on my Instagram on that post and put them in a little uh, randomizer, pull one gorgeous little human out and I will DM you for with the uh, with the pattern, and that's that. As far as the rest of the knit along goes, it's a chunkier, if you will, amount of time. Uh, it's almost a two month timeline. The reason why, again, is because you may wish to cast on more than one, or even if you are one, this is super optional as well with timing, and it gives you all kinds of time because it does breath between two months. Um, you can, again, do this for the holidays. You can do it for a gift knit. I pushed it out to December 31st because maybe this isn't only a holiday shrug that you wish to sport, um, depending what you celebrate, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, but maybe it's for the new year. Maybe it's for New Year's. Maybe you're going away. I mean, unlimited, unlimited factors. So there is another part, of course, where there will be prizes at the end. I will include details that'll come um, along with that in my next video as well with Instagram um, because we are having prizes for those two for lucky participants of the knit along. I hope I've covered all the information there. Um, I think I have, but if you have any questions, feel free to ask here on the comments 
or ask in Instagram. Um, I'm happy to share answers with you, especially if I forgot anything. Um, but what I do want to share is what I'm going to knit. So I have had, since I knit the Saturday shrug, I have had exactly in my head what I wanted to knit for my next shrug. The one that I did for the Saturday, I feel with my color choices, is very spring, summer, and I got a lot of great wear out of her, the Saturday shrug, fabulous. My next one, I think I'm gonna go cinch. I think I have to try the gorgeous hugging and all the shaping around the neck. I feel like it's going to just scream holidays and I'm not diverting like much further than my last shrug because I loved it so hard is this. We are doing the Camaro Snuff Nug, but in black this time. It's going to be rich, it's going to be moody, and it's going to be fabulous. Hugging up, I already have outfits that are going to be dark and just lovely for evening. This is where the other part comes in. Hello, my gorgeous little mini from Skin Cocaine. She's gonna be the cast on. Here's how I'm gonna work it in my brain. Obviously has only happened up here, not on here yet, is I'm going to unwind the skein, ball her up. I think I'm going to go double, perhaps triple, if the length allows to do the cast on, and then all the blackness. Oh, this is not only going to be a holiday shrug. I mean, the colors were just, this was not, this was not all played out. This happened as it does. I brought this along with me on my travels. This came to me by magic by Gita, like what? And it's going to be lovely. It's going to be memories of Rhinebeck. No words, no words, too excited. Just with that, I will cheers. I will cheers to all the lovely people that I met along my Rhinebeck journey, making my first Rhinebeck weekend a very memorable, lovely time. So thank you for that. Um, thank you to all the people that came up to me and shared that you are watching along this fun travel knitting journey of mine. Um, and also cheers to the knit along. My first knit along, I have to like, we're christening, we're having a sip. I'm so excited and I hope you will join me. So we will sit. Cheers. With that, thank you very much for joining me today. I cannot share how happy and proud I am that we are all on this knitting adventure together. And um, yes, if you have the chance to go to Ryan Beck in the future, please do. If you do not, hopefully you get to a festival or, you know, there's some kind of knitting circle where you are, or maybe you want to participate in a knit along, for example, to be a part of this wonderful community of ours. I hope you find joy in your knitting today. And until next time, thank you.